This episode of Tech Tip is brought to you by SANS.org, the most trusted source for computer security training. Use code SECUREBIT underscore TECH05 at checkout to get 5% off any course in any format. Welcome to Tech Tip episode 29. In this episode of Tech Tip, we're going to look at a new tool I created called Hash Monitor. All right, everybody. Uh, so today on this tech tip, like I said before, we're going to talk about a new tool created called Hash Monitor. So let's go ahead and just do a quick overview, real quick. And uh, so basically, what Hash Monitor is is uh, it, you guys know I like to crack passwords, um, but I'm not typically doing it for uh, you know malicious reasons. I'm not I'm not trying to crack a password, associate that with a user account, and then log into their account and, and grab whatever I want. Uh, it's more for the fun of it, more for building up my word list, um, and then pen test when you need to do that type of thing. You know, that's what it's there for. Um, so I, I love uh, collecting hashes to practice, um, practice doing what I do. So I uh, typically would go to a lot of things like, um, let's see, at Dumpmon. So typically I would go to tweets that app dump mom's putting out. Uh, let's see if I can find one. You'll see, all right, so for instance, this one has uh, 54 emails and hashes, two hashes. I'd go to this paste bin, drag this over real quick, pull out the emails and hashes from here, uh, maybe use tech collect to do it, um, or, or maybe just pull them out uh, however I want to pull them out. Then I'd go ahead and crack them. But uh, it was just taking too long to be able to pull all this information from uh, Dumpmon and uh, Pastebin Dorks, or two of them, uh, and, and of course from other web resources like uh, Andrew Mohawk's Pastelert. So what I did is I wrote a tool called Hash Monitor that uh, uses the Twitter API to connect to these accounts and uh, pull the links and then scrape out the hashes that we want from it. So, uh, yeah, so that's what, what I did, and it creates a database uh, for this so you can track it and uh, be able to pull them out as you need them and stuff, and it'll make more sense when I show it to you. Uh, one thing I should note that this is for Python 2.7, not Python 3, uh, so make sure you have 2.7. Um, also, there are mostly standard libraries used besides uh, Python.Twitter. Um, so you need this library installed in order to run this tool right now, and uh, you can download and uh, get installation instructions for that library here. So I'll show you that real quick. So very uh, very simple to install this. Basically, you're going to um, you're going to git clone the repository. Once you git clone it, uh, cd into it, pip install requirements, then set up build, set up install, and you should be all set to go from there. So, uh, yeah, so Python Twitter is a requirement, but everything else is pretty standard. Um, but let's just go ahead and get into the tool. So, make this a little larger, and dot slash. Uh, like always, we'll, we'll start off with the help command and, and work our way down. So, help shows us the options that you have. So obviously the first option is help. Um, you can do attack D to specify a database name. So by default, it's going to create a database called hashmon.db. But if you want it to create a database called something else, or if you want to have multiple databases, then by all means you can do so. If you want to output the results to a, uh, a file, um, you just do attack O output, and it's going to output whatever uh, standard out is there. Uh, if you combine this with the list command, you can start outputting list of MD5s, SHA-1s, or SHA-256. So I should note that um, I do scrape SHA-1, SHA-256, and MD5s out. Um, so it's not just grabbing MD5s. A TAC-S will give you a summary of what uh, database you have selected. So by default, if you just do a TAC-S, it's only going to look at your hashmon.db. Uh, uh, this is something I haven't quite added yet, but will be a feature soon, but it will allow you to add more Twitter accounts to monitor if you uh, find some that you want to take a, uh, a better look at. And of course, 
um, there may become a time where uh, you want to remove some hashes from uh, from the database, and you could do that with uh, the tech R, and you give it a file that has uh, hashes in it. In this case, I'm showing um, hashcat.pot, which is just the result file from when you're done cracking uh, passwords. So uh, you can just pull it in just like that, and I'll demo all that. So let's go ahead and just start off. Uh, the first time you run the command, in fact, let me go ahead and remove hash mon dot db. Okay, good. So the first time you run the command, you don't have to even give it any arguments unless you want to change the database name. Uh, the first time you run it, it might take a little bit of, a little bit of time because it's got to go through hundreds of URLs, scrape each of them uh, for MD, or for hashes, and then output that out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and let it go, and, and you can kind of see what it's doing. So here you can see it's adding all of these uh, links to its database, and it tracks these links. That way, if it comes across it again, it knows, hey, I don't have to scan it. You can see already here, ten links were previously scanned, so. It, it knows that uh, there is a duplicates even within the first initial set and uh, skips over those duplicates. So now it's actually opening up each of these uh, pastebin uh, sites and checking for hashes at each of those URLs. And if it finds any hashes, it's going to add them to our database. And I'm going to go ahead and pause while it does this, because it might take a little bit the first time. All right, uh, I paused for probably about 15 seconds there, and it was done. So you can see it added 615 hashes to the database. Um, and you can also notice, hey, here's MD5, here's a SHA-1. So it's grabbing everything, and it's keeping track of what are what. And if we scroll up, I'm sure we'll see a SHA-256. Yeah, a couple of them here, uh, obviously. Uh, not legit one there, but here's one there. Great. So we got all these hashes, and uh, now we can go ahead and uh, if you wanted to find out a little bit more uh, about the statistics for that database, you can hit that tech S to get a summary. So here you'll see we've collected 574 MD5s, 39 SHA-1s, and two uh, 256s. Uh, for a total of 615 hashes uh, across 169 URLs that we've scraped. So great. Let's go ahead and uh, look at a couple more. Now, uh, one thing I should note is uh, this number was the number of hashes found was greatly increased when uh, Dumpmon was running, but for the past four or five days, for whatever reason, let's see if that's changed. Yeah, for the past four days, no activity on uh, Dumpmon at all. So I don't know if that's technical issues or uh, if Pastebin uh, blocked his uh, program or, or something like that. But anyways, once this is back up and running, you'll get a ton more as well. But to make up for that, I have to scrape some web resources as well as uh, Twitter. So to give you an example, um, let's go with... If we do tech D uh, to choose a database, and I believe I have one called test4, which should have a decent amount of ones in there. So hey, it's going ahead and pulling a bunch of links. Ten of those links were already previously scanned. As you can see, I haven't really uh, done much with this particular database recently. So it's going to go ahead and do its thing. Probably should have went with test 5. I'll do that one next. I think that's the one I used more. And I'll go ahead and pause again while we wait for this to go. Okay, good. Alright, so we're in. We see in this case, it only added 440 hashes to the database instead of, what was it up here? Uh, for the previous one, I think it was like 500 and something. And that's because you'll see right here, hey, this hash is already in the database. So if it's already in the database, it doesn't try to add it again. So we're not adding duplicate hashes, which is, of course, uh, very important 
and that is uh, denoted by the minus sign here. All right, but now let's go ahead and take a tech S at this guy. And you can see, wow, there's a whole lot more in this one than in the previous one. And let's do test five as well. I think I'm going to have a ton in there. Right, and then uh, hashmon old, which was my first. There we go. My first one should have, maybe not, hashmon.old, or was it old, like, two, or something like that? Nope. I'm going to go ahead and cross that out. What was it? I don't know. But either way, I mean, you can, you can grab a whole bunch of hashes in here. Because it's storing it in a database, not a flat text file, it's a lot easier to query. So let's go ahead and show. Uh, now you have these hashes, and you want to output them in a format that you can use with Hashcat or whatever. Uh, to do that, we're going to do a tack L and then tell it what kind of hash we want. So if we want the MD5s, or the SHA-1, or the SHA-2.6, but let's go ahead with MD5 first, and it's just going to list them all out. So of course, um, you can print them to console like I did right there, but if we do tech o we can output it to a file. So let's just call this um, tech tip 29 dot out. Alright, so now if we go ahead and look at our cat tech tip 29 dot out, you can see it's all those hashes. So, uh, yeah, that's a way to do it. Of course, if you wanted to, um, oh, let me just show you, if you put in something that's not in the list, it's going to tell you, hey, you got to use any MD5, SHA-1, or SHA-256, and equal sign, I'll make sure I change that. So it's got to be one of these. So if we do any, um, it's going to do any hash regardless of uh, whether it's an MD5, SHA-256, whatever. And uh, let's just do one more example. 256. Great. So there's your two SHA-256. So let's go ahead and... Uh, show you the functionality to remove. So let's do cat hash cat.pot. So say you've gone ahead and, and run uh, you've you've run some hashes through uh, hashcat and you've gone ahead and cracked a few of them and you have a file like this. This is the default results file. Right? So you know this equals this. Great. So this is the password for this hash. Now, you don't want those hashes in the database anymore because you've already cracked those. So what you can do is do a tech r and then hash cat.pot and it's going to remove the ones that you've already cracked. So hey, all right, removing those from the database, you've removed 14 hashes. And of course, you can select which database you're doing this from. So if you wanted to do... Uh, D test four dot db and it's going to remove those from test four, test five. I've already removed them from test five. Do I have a test three? Test two. So on and so forth. Right. Um, and I think that rounds out. All the functionality. Let's do attack H real quick, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, showed you this, showed you this, showed you this, showed you this, showed you this. Yeah, so that rounds out what it does. Um, so, I mean, the really cool thing about this is it, it, it fixes, you know, the two major problems that I had uh, with pulling hashes before. One was speed. Um, you know, this is, is much faster. You set this up on a cron job to run hourly, and uh, you're just going to quickly collect a ton of hashes. Um, but the other problem I had was I don't care about the emails 
uh, I don't care about the uh, other personal information that may be in there. I just want the hashes from these data dumps. And this is a way for me to pull that without exposing myself to the rest of the uh, information. So I can just go ahead and, and pull all the hashes without having to see the email addresses associated with it. Um, so uh, it gives me a, a little bit more peace of mind about what I'm doing there. Um, so uh, that is Hash Monitor. If you have any features that you think would really help out, or if you know any Twitter accounts or specific URLs to monitor that collect hashes, um, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll add it to the tool. Um, but beyond that, I uh, hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, hit me up if you have any comments. Thanks.